Hi everyone. Well, it's time for me to do my video where I discuss my thoughts on the newly released George Harrison 50th anniversary remix for the All Things Must Pass classic album. Uh, this is a remix done by Paul Hicks, overseen by George's son, Danny Harrison. And um, I'm going to be talking specifically about the compact disc. I have not yet played any vinyl from this release. I'm just talking about the CD. And uh, I want to also say that I'm not going to be talking about the Blu-ray. Uh, I have uh, the five CD set right now that I'm referring to, or six, it's five CD and one Blu-ray. I have not listened to the Blu-ray. I have no doubt that it sounds wonderful. And uh, the main reason is because a lot of people don't really have the Blu-ray capability. They don't really get into that. And myself, too. I, I, I have just basically my TV set, you know, hooked up with some modest speakers on, on the floor. And it's not the best system. So I don't think I can get really that much out of the Blu-ray. So I'm going to bypass the Blu-ray. There are a lot of other people that have done reviews that uh, you can check out for the Blu-ray. So I'm just going to stick to the proper CD. All right. Um, before I start... I also want to say I am not uh, an audio fanatic. I am not an audiophile. Uh, I don't know a lot of technical jargon about high-end EQ, low-end this or that. Uh, you know, we talk about loudness wars, brick walling. All I can tell you is I'm approaching this review just from a guttural feeling as just a regular, ordinary guy, how it strikes my ears. I want to say also from the beginning, this is just my opinion. And everybody has got different opinions. People uh, listen to things differently. They hear things differently. They got different sets of ears. And they have different surroundings, different equipment. So this is subjective. So please remember that going into this. Now, so far, uh, the reviews that I've been hearing are mixed. I've been hearing some good things, but I've been hearing a lot of bad things about this. Uh, there's, there's still... A lot to come here as far as people's opinions go. Uh, it's very early in the game, so I'm not really overly concerned with that. Now, I uh, also want to say that I have watched a few reviews on YouTube. And uh, one of them that I want to talk about very briefly, and the reason, the only reason I'm mentioning this is because it's going to come up inevitably. I know you're going to be commenting on this, and it's a big thing right now as I make this video on this on this day, it has to do with Bobby Whitlock, the musician who uh, was present on All Things Must Pass and worked on it. And uh, apparently, from what I understand, there's a lot of controversy going on right now because the Harrison estate apparently hasn't really reached out to him and recognized him and really asked his feedback and memories of this and as a result i think he and his uh his wife i believe coco they're very bitter about this it seems and uh, i understand that to a point because i made a video myself you can find it here on my channel where i kind of pretty much defended them i want to just briefly cover this issue before anybody else wonders about it and asks me about it the idea to me is since Bobby Whitlock was so uh, present on this project, I believe it's very unfortunate that he was overlooked and he should have been asked, in my opinion, to participate and to give his thoughts on an interview or some part of history with this. So I understand that. What I don't understand is when I looked at that particular review, when they finally heard the album, and, I, and I'll stress also, I think they played the vinyl album, not the CD. They really trashed it said it was absolutely horrible everything on it was horrible it was garbage i couldn't i i don't think they could come up with enough uh, negative adjectives and things to describe what they thought of this and i got to tell you i don't know for a fact my opinion is i believe that in their case they just may be feeling like they have an axe to grind against the harrisons because i checked through what when I last looked over there, there were 400-something comments. And out of those 400-something comments, I saw one positive comment that disagreed with them. And the other 398 or 403, whatever it was, were all jumping on the bandwagon. Almost as if all the disparaging comments were left. And anything disagreeing that was positive about the record, this new mix, was eliminated. 
I don't know. I don't know if that's true. I'm not making any definite claims. That was the impression I got that there was kind of a kind of a bitterness. Also, um, uh, I watched a video by Andrew Dixon. Andrew Dixon did a really good uh, run through of the entire contents of this, and at the end, I was perplexed because he. He was rating, comparing the new remix to the original 1970 version of All Things Must Pass. And at the end, he had 11 points given to this new mix and only 7 points given to the original 1970 mix. Yet at the end, he decided he liked the old album better. And I, I guess, I mean, I know what that is sometimes. Sometimes I'll rate an album. And if I rate an album, I may feel an album's like, you know... Uh, only a 6 out of 10, but I like it more, or I may give us another album 8 out of 10 and like it less. So, I mean, I get that to a point, but it is a little strange that I, I, I don't understand how you, you rank 11 in favor of this and a 7 as far as the old one and wind up coming out thinking the old one's preferable. I don't understand it exactly in this case, okay? So I, I spent a lot of time just talking about this. So you might be able to... to gather from what I'm saying. I really like this new mix of All Things Must Pass. And I don't care if I'm the only person who says it. I really enjoyed listening to this, all the regular songs uh, on, on the proper album. I absolutely think it's an improvement. Now, there, this may be a few exceptions here and there, but overall, I'm happy. As I say, I don't get into this thing about High end, low end and stuff, brick walling, whatever it is. Uh, this will be my go to choice now. Already, I can tell by far this is the one that I want to want to play. This is my go to all things must pass album. I think some people maybe resent that they have to spend money on yet another edition of all things must pass. And there's some people, God knows, I understand nostalgia. I understand respect for originals. A lot of people have a sentimental feeling towards the original 1970 release. They don't want it tampered with. And I think they won't accept any changes. That, that's what I think. All right. So I, I think that the original All Things Must Pass, for the most part, sounded rather muddy. Uh, rather, even George Harrison himself wasn't keen on the Phil Spector overproducing on some of the tracks. Uh, Spector was, and he wanted it to sound more clear and natural, I think. You know, back when he did the, I guess, the 2000 version, 2000, 2001 version, uh, George, he, he oversaw that. He had written in the notes that he actually had an urge to want to remix the whole thing himself rather than just remaster it. That one, the 30 year anniversary one with George Harrison, was a remastering, not so much a remixing. Uh, but you know, I got to say, one of the things that gets me about this is, as far as the nostalgia thing goes, you know, the fondness for what you remember and what you grew up with. I get it. I get it. I'm like that, too. But the thing is, I think, try to picture this. I think that if this new version by Paul Hicks and Danny Harrison had somehow been the one that was released in 1970, this would be the one that everybody would adore. And then, if 2021 we saw a, a 50th anniversary edition released that was the original one, the Spectorized one, people would say, what the heck is this? This is all muddied out. This is all, everything's buried, you know. Uh, and I really can't hear George very well in it. I, I don't think they would accept the 1970 version if these had been reversed, you know. Because uh, I think the 1970 version, while I respect it, is uh, not as good as the new one. And I, wa I want to, there's a lot I have to say before I go through some of the songs here. Uh, I think Paul Hicks did a sensational job on the whole. I like Paul Hicks's, his, his, I like Paul Hicks, his uh, work, generally everything he's done on these solo Beatle album projects. Uh, and I rate uh, All Things Must Pass. Out of all of these things I've heard, the ones done by Giles Martin for the Beatles and the ones by Paul Hicks, a lot of the solo stuff, I rate, uh, I think, All Things Must Pass as my favorite, or at least right up there would say the Imagine, John Lennon Imagine that uh, Paul Hicks did. Um, so, you know, I, I, I got some notes here, of course, I'm, I'm referring to. I think George Harrison himself would have been very happy with this new mix, very happy. That's what I think. 
Now, let's go through uh, some of the songs here. I got the, my feelings on most of the songs, almost all of them written down here. Uh, some of them I may spend more time on than others. Some of them I just may gloss over more. Um, the thing also about this 2020 remix by Paul Hicks is that it's much clearer, it's cleaner, you can hear George. The most important thing is you can finally hear George Harrison's voice up front. And I was able to note, notice some words, to hear some words that I didn't hear before, that I used to have to maybe look at the lyric sheet to tell what he was saying, where I could hear them now. So that makes me happy right there. The overall sound of this album now is more immediate. It's more immediate. It, 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 it's more present. It's not as distant. Um, all right. So those are some feelings on it before I get started. I'm going to go through some of the songs now. Just take the opening of the album, uh, the song I'd Have You Anytime. It's gorgeous, a gorgeous song to begin with, Bob Dylan co-write. Uh, I, I would say that uh, it really sounds so beautiful more than ever. It's definitely an improvement uh, than, than the original, I think. And there was a line in there uh, that he George sings, let me say it, let me play it. I always thought he was saying, let me stay here, let me play here. Because it, I don't know. I could have, I always could have looked at the lyric sheet, I suppose, but this is the first time I heard it clearly. Let me play it. Uh, let me say it. Let me play it. Excuse me. Doing emphasis on the T. Now the next track, "My Sweet Lord," the classic number one single, has been meeting up with a lot of uh, disappointment. A lot of people really don't like "My Sweet Lord," and. I don't know what people are hearing or what people aren't hearing. Now, I love the original mix of My Sweet Lord, the one that we all grew up with that was a big hit. Uh, but I think this sounds really good. You know, I don't know. I, My Sweet Lord, I really enjoy it. Uh, the clarity of it. George's voice being more up front. The uh, Hare Krishna chorus more, you know, uh, discernible. I, I just like it. I don't know if this is the same exact mix that was done on the Record Store Day release. I remember playing the Record Store release 45 that came out not too long ago and thinking, wow, I've heard My Sweet Lord 50,000 times, but it never sounded that good as the, in my opinion, as it struck me on the 45 when I played it in a recent, a recent Record Store Day release. Um, so I don't know if this is that same one, but it sounded good. Now, there are four tracks on the original All Things Must Pass, in my opinion, that really suffer from the wall of sound. And I, I'm going to take a moment here, something I don't want to forget. I like Phil Spector's work. I like the wall of sound. I appreciate the genius of Phil Spector's style. And I like what he did in the 50s and early 60s and all of that. I also like what Phil Spector did with the Let It Be album. I thought Phil Spector enhanced the Let It Be album. One of the concerns that I had when people used to talk about trying to despecterize the album All Things Must Pass is I thought, well, we all want to hear it a little cleaner, perhaps, but... Is, is it going to ruin it because All Things Must Pass wouldn't be All Things Must Pass without some of that Spectre sound? We we're so used to it. It's kind of, it's trademark. Well, I'm, I'm happy to say that even though I'm going on and on praising Paul Hicks and the work done and how crisp it is, I still think there's enough wall of sound, there's enough Spectre sound or whatever you want to call it to preserve some of that for the, for, for the, the diehard fans. Um... Yeah, I don't think that it's all totally changed over. Uh, definitely, it's definitely some of it there. So, the four songs that I was worried about most were the next one, Wah Wah, and another one was A Waiting on You All. The third one was Art of Dying, and the final one I was concerned with were Hear Me Lord. To me, those four tracks were the ones most in question, so we'll go, we'll go through it. First of all, Wah Wah, big revelation to me. The clarity of George's vocals. The, the, the vocals are high up in the front, finally. The drums are booming. Um, I, I think it's incredible, the new version of Wawa. I, I like it much better than the old one. Um, if you listen like any kind of remix, there's times when I think to myself, oh, you know, maybe there's something, some subtle nuance. Maybe there's a, I don't know, maybe a, some brass that I thought was louder. I don't hear it. I don't hear it now, some brass that's been subdued. Or... 
maybe there's a guitar that's louder. You know, you, you hear sometimes you say I'm missing something. Something is brought down in the mix, and, and I, what happened to that? But as soon as you think that, something else is brought up, and compensates for it. Whatever it is, I think this is really good. Wow, wow. I really liked. It. I was impressed with it. And I'll say the vocals are so clear that maybe you people have heard this before, but it was new to me. Later on in, in the late in the track. George says, baby, baby, you don't have to. And I, I never heard him say, I never knew he was saying baby, baby in it. Now it was very clear. I always knew he was saying something about it. I never know what he was saying, but it's baby, baby. All right, so I like that. Uh, isn't it a pity? So much clearer vocals and harmonies. You can hear when they're singing at the end, you know, or what a pity, it's a pity. At the end is so, so strong. Uh, what is Life? Now, What is Life uh, has got the clarity on it. It's a great song. Uh, and the guitar, there's a guitar part that's more pronounced at the, the end. I heard more guitar sounds near the end of the song coming in with the verse singing uh, what I feel I can't say. I heard more guitar than I usually have in that part. Sometimes you get things, like I said, you didn't hear before that seem new, and sometimes you're missing old guys. Um, so... What really struck me about what his life is, for the longest time in my young fandom years, I always thought the line George was singing was, it's a love that you need. You know, my love is there for you any time of day. It's a love that you need. But the actual lyrics are, but if it's not love that you need. Now, I found that out years ago because I read lyric sheets and I found out, oh, I didn't know he was cramming all that in there. Well, now with this new version of What Is Life, I can hear George clearly saying, if it's not love that you need. I can hear those extra words. Not just it's a love, but if it's if it's not love. So I hear that extra, uh, few extra words. Uh, if Not For You was always a beautiful song, uh, even on the original, but the original 70 version, but this one really brings it out. If Not For You has never sounded better. It's clearly an improvement here, even better than the old one. Now, songs like uh, Behind That Locked Door, I'd say Ditto. It's along the lines of If Not For You, about the same kind of quality of impression, the way it impressed me. Uh, Let It Down, I've never been a big fan of Let It Down, and it still sounds a little messy to me. You know, it's a messy song. I want to also mention, before I forget, I'm glad I thought of it. You know, the Phil Spectorism, Phil Spector technique, that's kind of like baked in, you know? Like, one of the concerns about doing this was, how are you going to, if you want to despectorize this, you can't really do it because it's kind of part of it. It's all like one, and it's kind of like all caked in there together. So it's hard to separate it. But they did manage with the technology today to be able to bring... George's voice to the front where it should be, uh, but at the same time, having a little specter sound or a little, whatever you want to call it, a wall of sound, a little bit of that feel that the specter used to do, uh, he's known for. So it's not totally like a whitewash. Um, I, I think it's just enough. But let it down. Yeah, it still sounds a little messy. Uh, I can't, still can't make out the words too well in that one. Uh, but it's still better than the 1970 version for Let It Down. Run of the Mill struck me as uh, more dynamic, maybe. Maybe a little more, you know, lively and spread out. Yeah, there were times being a compact disc. A lot of times people say, you know, compact discs, you know, they sound like kind of squashed together or, you know, because they're compressed. I, I think I know what people mean at times. Um, I still say... Even if it sounds a little compressed, the overall clarity and, and and cleanness of it makes up for it to me. It's not it's not a horror show at all. I enjoyed it. So some other notes here. Run of the uh, yeah, run of the mill. I meant I mentioned it, it struck me. Yeah, I mentioned that already. Uh, a little more dynamic. Uh, let's see what have we got here. Uh, let's see. Beware of darkness. Uh, it's a strong vocal on there. Uh, it's one of the best songs on the album. The instruments are all clear. It's an improvement. Uh, George's voice is great. I have no problem with Beware of Darkness. I think it's enhanced by this thing. Uh, Ballad of Sir Frankie Crisp, Let It Roll. 
Uh, this guitar at the very beginning to me sounded a little uh, unusually, not what I'm used to hearing, uh, but the sound overall is superior to the original one. Now, Awaiting on You All, that's song number two. I mentioned Wah Wah was the first real wall of sound. Awaiting on You All is was really, in my, in my estimation, the original 1970 All Things Must Pass really did a disservice to that song. You really couldn't hear anything. Thank God the vocals are more discernible now. Uh, there's only so much you can do because I really get the feeling that uh, Waiting on You All was one of the most uh, compromised by the the big barrage of, of sounds in it. And it's all part of the master, I guess. But uh, it was probably the most specter-drenched, if you will, I'm guessing, uh, track there. But it, it, the clear winner is the new version to me. Now, the song All Things Must Pass, I love it. All Things Must Pass was the first... Uh, version we got leaked out on youtube to hear this new sound and, and no wonder because i always love that song uh I mean, this may be the best remix of all on the entire album uh, there's other ones i like a lot but i think maybe the song all things must pass it's very clean sounding again uh, the vocals are heavenly you know uh pristine strings blows the 1970 original out of the water as far as i'm concerned uh, and then, the, and again, I pick up on certain vocal inflections. The, I think one of the last times, if not the last time, that Paul, that excuse me, uh, George sings the line "All things must pass." Uh, sounds different than I'm used to hearing it. I, I maybe it's just clearer. It's up front. I can hear him stretch it out a little bit more. Sing it differently than I'm used to hearing. Uh, I Dig Love, the song I Dig Love, it, it's my least favorite song on the album. I've never been a big fan of it. Uh, you know, the, the new remix sounds nice, but, uh, I, you know, I've never been a big fan of it. Now, Art of Dying, the Art of Dying song I really enjoy, and uh, that's another one that uh, is one of the really heavily uh, layered with uh, sounds tracks that I was wondering how we were going to try to make that sound clearer. Again, I, I know I sound like a, a broken record, but it's much easier to hear George's vocals in Art of Dying. I thought it was a real improvement. Uh, that alone would make this version superior, but the overall sound altogether is just more crisp on it. As good as you can get Art of Dying. I don't think you can get any better than that. Now, we come to version two of Isn't It a Pity, and I, I never, I, like, like a lot of people, I don't know why they needed a version two. I, I much rather they devoted that space or an original album in 1970 to something else. Maybe I Live For You or something else that George had. Uh, it's totally unnecessary on the album. Um, but this sounds better than the original album anyway, clarity-wise, I think. Uh, but now the final track that I really wanted to point out here is Hear Me Lord. And I mentioned this at the beginning. It's another of those wall of sound uh they're heavily layered uh, barrages of of noise, and George's voice is up front. Uh, overall, the song is clearer here and less muddy sounding. Uh, and uh, there you go. You know, um, I'm glad to be able to hear George singing it better and uh, make out a little more of what he's saying. Still have to maybe still have to check the lyric sheet here and there. You know, it's never going to be perfect. But overall, no, I really, really was impressed with this. Now, the Apple Jam, although I did not listen to the Apple Jam, uh, it, it, I noticed that it's not remixed like the rest of the album, right? It's remastered, which is different. It's remastered, but it's not remixed. Nothing's been adjusted and changed on it. Uh, so that's my feeling on the proper album. But I don't want you to go away because I have just a few notes here on the supplements and I don't have all that much to say, but we'll see how fast I could do it. Now, we got, uh, let's see, three extra CDs. Uh, CD3 is from uh, day one of the demos, because we get demos day one and demos day two. May 26th, day one, CD3. What I'm gonna not going to talk about every track, but I'll tell you, some notations. First, we got I Live For You, take one, a song I mentioned a little while ago. Maybe they could have put a nice version of that on the album. George could have put it on. Uh, it's nice to have that, take one. 
Now, uh, we have What is Life, take three, uh, which I think sounds really amazing, and it's a highlight to me of this set. Out of the bonus tracks, the What is Life, take three is a highlight for me. I love the guitar on it, and Ringo's drumming. I should mention, that reminds me, the day one, uh, May 26th bonus CD of demos has Klaus Vorman and Ringo Starr playing. Klaus on, on, on the bass, Ringo on the drums. And Ringo's drums are very enthusiastic and exciting on this uh, What Is Life Take 3. I'm, I really enjoy it. But the idea of having the intimacy of George, Klaus, and Ringo is kind of reminiscent of, of, how, or of how we talked about the John Lennon Plastic Ono Band album with those, you know, John and Klaus and Ringo. It's kind of like uh, the same situation. Then we have I Dig Love. I said earlier I didn't really care for I Dig Love, the song, but uh, take one here is more fun and enjoyable than the album version. A real rollicking and fun. Much better. I'd rather hear this one. Uh, going Down to Golders Green is an Elvis-like tribute, or Carl Perkins. Elvis, Carl Perkins sound tribute. Uh, going Down to Golders Green. Then we have Dara Dune, take two. Some of you may know this song. You see George playing it with Paul and Ringo in the anthology footage when they're at George's place hanging out in, in on the grass. Uh, it's not great, Dara Dune, but at least we got it. Uh, then there's, uh, for all you Krishna fans out there, there's something over five minutes called Om Hare Om. <laughs> take one, which I could leave that. And Sour Milk Sea is on the disc also. Uh, it's never been a favorite, Sour Milk Sea, though it's good to have it. Then we go to uh, day two. Now we're on a disc four and day two of these demos. Uh, I don't have the Beware of Abco disc. I was going to show that. Well, I have, I've had a bootleg. A lot of people have had a bootleg. For, I've had this for something 20 or more years. I've had a bootleg. Could be 25 years. I don't know. Called Beware of Abco. A lot of people have heard that. And all the songs that are on that disc, Beware of Abco, the demos... Uh, that I believe George played for Phil Spector on this this session, uh, for him to hear him. All of them are on here. It's it's, it's identical, I believe. Um, so I already had it. Now, a lot of people are complaining, oh, they're giving us stuff we already had. Look, it's still great to have it here as part of the set, to have it in the collection, in the box, with everything else. So I'm glad to have it. But the thing is, as I played these over again, I'm like, man, I was getting a little bored, I'll be honest with you. I haven't played the Beware of Abco disc, the boot, in about 20 years, and I'm not likely to play uh, CD4 anytime soon. Uh, it's got a lot of songs that are on the official All Things Must Pass album, including what I like, a Hear Me Lord version with an electric guitar. I like the electric guitar, Hear Me Lord. And some of this stuff, I'll name some titles here that are demoed. Uh, Everybody, Nobody, that's a song, another song, something called Window, Window. Song called Tell Me What Has Happened to You, song called Nowhere to Go, a song that's been on YouTube called Cosmic Empire, a song called Mother Divine, and an early version of I Don't Want to Do It that would uh, eventually be released by George in 1985 on the Porky's Revenge soundtrack, right? Um, but it, I'll tell you, after a while, it's kind of like dull. It's the kind of thing like, I'm glad to have it, I'm grateful to for it to exist in my collection, but I'm not likely to play it very often. Then we go to CD5, which is session outtakes and jams. Now, I like, I'm not a big fan of jams, but I love session outtakes. We have Isn't It a Pity, Take 14, and it's a joke track, only lasts uh, a minute or so, where George jokingly says on Take 14, he sings the song, Isn't It So Shitty? Isn't It a Pain? How we do so many takes, and we're doing them again, or something like that. Very funny. Here's a highlight. Another highlight on, on these bonus tracks is Wah Wah Take One. I think it's the same vocal as the release version. I could be wrong, but it sounds the vocal sounds the same. It's the hi a highlight. A real energetic driving Take One of Wah Wah. I love that. That's a highlight. Something here called Wedding, Be Wedding Bells are Breaking Up That Old Gang of Mine. That's the old classic song. Uh, hear Me Lord Take Five. Great to hear that with clearer vocals. Down to the River, a.k.a. Rocking Chair Jam. You know, George is fond of that Rocking Chair in Hawaii song. Uh, then we have an interesting uh, curio jam called Get Back. The Beatles Get Back. George kind of ad-libs a lot of that and has fun with it. 
And then finally, uh, I'll note, well, Woman, Don't You Cry For Me, Take Five, which is an early take of the song that would be on George's 1976 album, 33 and a Third. So there's other, there were other things, too. I didn't give you every track. There are other tracks on here, but that's the ones that stand out. What I really want to just say again, uh, for those who were skipping around here and stuff, basically, I really love the proper mix. I'm talking about the CD. I have not heard the vinyl. People say vinyl usually sounds better when it comes to things like this. Just my opinion. Only me, subjective. I definitely will be playing this version, the 50th anniversary, every time I want to listen to All Things Must Pass. Terrific job by Paul Hicks and Danny Harrison. Um, are there some moments here where you say, oh, where, where did that instrument go? I thought I, I thought I heard brass here or something, or I thought there was like a cymbal that, that I had, but, but, oh, but this guitar is, 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 is interesting. I didn't hear that before. So that's me summarizing it. Um, hey, look, I may be alone in all this. I think some people out there are, are stuck with the old one in their minds. They don't really want to let it go, but it's all subjective, folks. I like this. Thanks for watching.